I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I am a little bit terrified to do this video. I've been putting it off for as long as I can. It needs to be done. Let's get it done. Two PC setups are great. I've talked about them a lot on this channel. You get to split up your CPU power so you're not sharing resources for the pretty intense stuff that you're doing. And the video side can be pretty simple. You take an extra HDMI, you go into a capture card, you're pretty much done. Audio is actually not that hard either if you have the right equipment and if you know what you're doing. The problem is streamers don't have a lot of background in audio. Most of you, and this is not like an insult, by the way, this is just the norm. Like there's no reason in your life you needed to know what a signal chain looks like or what an effect send, how it works, any of those things. They're, they're just, you don't need them. And fortunately, we're finally getting close enough to an era where due to devices like the Go XLR that just handles it all for you, you don't need to pretty soon. But I know a lot of you are still using other devices like a USB mic or a mixer like the Yamaha MG10XU or the Behringer Xenix 802 USB, whatever, any, any of that stuff. And setting up a two PC system can be incredibly complicated. So without making this intro any longer, here is my goal for this video. And I hope by the end of the video, you can walk away feeling confident about these things. First, let's try to get a basic outline understanding, a visual understanding, if you will. I'm a very visual learner, a visual understanding of what you're trying to accomplish here. I think that's the biggest thing is helping you understand the goal. It gives you the confidence to tweak stuff and try stuff. You feel like you're in a little more control if you know what you're trying to do. Two, because there are so many different ways you can set it up and every different device is gonna require you to do it slightly differently, I'm gonna tell you a handful of tools that you can use regardless of what your setup is. By the way, fun fact, whenever Ken T says, regardless, I like to correct her and say irregardless, even though I know it's not a word because it makes her doubt herself. Anyway, try that sometime on your loved ones. <laughs> so yeah, number two, the tools that you have at your devices and how they can apply. Number three, to make this as helpful and as easy as possible, and I will provide a time code down below here, I'm gonna go over the three most common audio setups and how I would approach setting them up for a two PC stream setup, start to finish. And if I can accomplish all three of those things in a timely video that's not like more than 30 minutes long, I'll, I'll be a hero. I'll be, I'll be a hero. Welcome back to the Alpha Gaming Channel. My name is Harris Heller. I am your stream doctor. And today we're gonna make your stream sound spicy. Okay, two PC audio. If you've never worked with audio before, you feel like it's just a spider web of connections and you need to get this one to go to here and this one to go to here. It's overwhelming to look at, but when you break it down, it's not that complicated. A two PC setup is simply three audio sources. Your gaming PC, your streaming PC, and you. The goal is to take the sound sources from each of these, for example, your voice from you, your game audio from your gaming PC, your alerts from your streaming PC, and route them in all the directions that they need to go. That's all you're trying to do. Get these sounds to hear. Get these sounds to hear while at the same time being able to maintain control over those sounds for tweaking volume, for muting things. That's, that's basically it. Each of these three sources does provide audio that needs to be transmitted to another one. For example, your gaming PC provides your gameplay audio, which needs to be transmitted both to the streaming PC for the stream and to your headphones for you to hear. Your streaming PC is the source of your alert sounds, which needs to be sent to you, but doesn't necessarily need to be sent to your gaming PC. And of course you and your voice provide sound that your stream needs to hear and also your teammates need to hear. You also have a couple audio sources that give you options on where they originate. For example, Discord or whatever you use for team chat can be on either your gaming or your streaming PC. I prefer to be on my gaming PC just because I like to have a push to mute on either my mouse or keyboard. That way you're not talking over somebody else's stream. Look, just don't be that guy who talks nonstop in other people's streams. Sam. But some people prefer that to be on the streaming PC because then it requires one less thing to be routed from the gaming PC over to the streaming PC. Music can also be on either the gaming or the streaming PC. I prefer to be on the streaming PC just because I have a stream deck plugged into that PC and having a play pause button right there 
just makes life really easy. These choices completely depend on your setup and what's easiest to control for you. It can be done either way. So let's talk about some of the ways that you can route some of this audio. Number one, probably the most common tool that people use is voice meter. Voice meter is a little bit overwhelming to look at, but you really only need to use like 5% of it and then you're done. I used to use it before I got a Go XLR. Now I don't need it anymore and I prefer not to use it. It's just, it's just more complicated than I like it to be, but it can help you with a couple tools that you might need. Mostly what I used it before was just capturing my gameplay and my chat audio and sending them over to my streaming PC. Another amazing software audio routing kind of hack is a built-in tool in OBS that not a lot of people know about. It's called audio monitoring and it's super easy to use, especially on a PC that's already running OBS. For example, if you wanna send maybe your alert sounds to a different output than your normal PC output, what you do is you click on the gear in the OBS mixer, go to advanced audio properties. And that place where it normally says monitoring off, monitor off, monitoring off, Either way, basically saying you're sending it to the output but you're not actually hearing it. You change that to monitor and output. Monitor essentially means you're able to hear what it's capturing, right? Like that's why like big audio speakers are called monitors. You're, you're monitoring the audio. But then you go into the settings in OBS, you go to the advanced tab and there's a section called audio monitoring device and you choose which device you are monitoring that audio to. That can be back to your gaming PC if for some reason you need that. That can be to your headphones. Whatever you need, that is another way of routing audio to another device. You can even use this on your gaming PC if you want, instead of voice meter, just open up OBS, capture your audio and monitor it over to your streaming PC. I wouldn't recommend it for something that needs to be synced properly. Usually there tends to be a delay over time, but for something like alerts or music, doesn't matter as much. Lastly, if you have something like this, you have a couple extra tools you might not understand. There are a lot of inputs and outputs on these, which you can see by all the knobs and the little holes, but that gives you a ton of control. For example, if your USB is connected from here to your streaming PC, so that's where your audio from this is being routed, there is up here an extra headphones output. That doesn't need to be just for headphones. You can go from the headphones output to the line in on your gaming PC, and then you have an extra control knob, the monitor phones right here, that volume knob will control only the volume of the headphones. So that way you can control how much of your voice your teammates on your gaming PC can hear. Or this is a useful one. There is something here called the effects send. It's just another output. Let's say you're a music streamer and you not only have your voice, plugged into input one, but you have your piano or your guitar plugged into input two. Down here, right above the volume knob, there's another knob called effects. So while you can have both your voice and your instrument going to your streaming PC, all you do is turn up the effects send on the voice, you leave it all the way down on the instrument, and now your teammates can only hear your voice. This doesn't send the instrument out of the effects send. It's essentially like a, a poor man's submix. You send one mix one place to your stream PC, another mix another place to your gaming PC. It can be really useful. All right, let's apply this to some real world practice and let's set up a real two PC stream. All right. Setup number one, let's start with the easiest and simplest to understand, and we will advance step by step with the other two after this. Setup number one, go XLR. With the mini coming out in November, this is gonna be a much more viable setup option for a lot of streamers. Even beginner streamers with a limited budget, a lot of them are gonna be able to pick up one of these and get started. So let's talk about how it works. The Go XLR is set up in a way where you have inputs and outputs to all three of your sources. You have your USB jack, which goes to your gaming PC, which provides audio both directions, inputs and outputs. You have a line in and a line out, which goes to your streaming PC, again, providing both inputs and outputs. And you have a mic and a headphone jack providing your inputs and outputs to you, that third source. On top of that, the USB plug that goes to your gaming PC is actually multiple devices set up in one. You can actually see that when you plug it in, you open up your sound devices, you can see there's Go XLR game, there's Go XLR chat, there's Go XLR music, and a couple other ones. You have a lot of different options for routing audio. So once you have all this plugged in, setting it up is incredibly simple. Let's start by setting up the game sound and sending that both to your headphones and to your stream. You're gonna go into your sound settings, you're gonna click on Go XLR system, and you're gonna click on set as default device. Now your gaming PC is sending any sounds coming out of that PC directly to what's called system sound. 
in your GoXLR. Next, you go to the GoXLR routing tab in the software. You find the system input and you check the boxes of all the places you want it to go. For example, you want to go to your headphones. You also want to check the line out box because that is the output going to your streaming PC. But obviously, you don't want to check your voice chat box because that's going to be sent to Discord and you don't want to be sending your game sound to your Discord. But now you have your game sound coming to the GoXLR and being routed to both your headphones and your streaming PC. Now the next input, let's grab Discord off your gaming PC. You're going to go into Discord, you're going to go to your settings, and you're going to go to audio and video. Where it says output, you're going to change that to GoXLR chat. And you remember how I mentioned there were multiple devices on the GoXLR? Well, what you've basically done is you've sent your system audio to this fader, and you've sent your chat audio to this fader so you have complete separate control over what you and your stream hears. These faders, by the way, super fancy. They control both your stream audio and what you hear so you know exactly what your stream sounds like. Cool, let's go back into the routing tab and let's make sure that the headphones and the line out are checked. You'll notice GoXLR did something nice here and they grayed out the box for chat. That way your teammate's voice isn't being sent right back to them because no, there's no reason anybody would ever want that. And now your teammate's voice is being sent to both your stream and your headphones and you have it set to a different fader so you can control the volume individually. Cool, let's go to the next source, you and your own voice. You need to send your voice to both PCs. You need to send yourself to your teammates on your gaming PC and your stream on your streaming PC. So on the routing table underneath mic, make sure chat is checked and line out is checked. And you know what, if you don't wanna hear your mic back in your headset, you can actually uncheck headphones and then your mic's not coming back. This is just up to you. And then on your gaming PC in Discord, you're gonna go into the same audio video settings, you're gonna go to input and change that to Go XLR chat mic. Lastly, sounds from the final source, your streaming PC. Since your streaming PC is connected to your Go XLR via the line out, on your streaming PC, you're gonna go into your sound settings, you're gonna pick your line out, and you're gonna make that your default device. That line out on the streaming PC is going into the line in on the Go XLR, so you're gonna go into the routing table, and underneath line in, you're gonna check headphones, and you're going to check line out. Basically, what this is gonna allow you to do is now in OBS, you only need one audio source, and that is your Go XLR. Because every single sound is coming through your Go XLR, and it's being mixed together and sent through that line out to your streaming PC. That should have everything your stream needs. And your audio is set up on the streaming PC. Look, this is not a Go XLR ad. There's a reason I rant and rave about this because you're about to see how much more complicated this can get. <laughs> Let's move on to the next most common setup, which is a USB mic. Now, a USB mic, the most complicated thing about it is its entire lack of I.O. If you're not familiar with the term I.O., by the way, it stands for inputs and outputs. So we talked about the Go XLR having USB, line in, line out, headphone, mic. Those are all I.O. A USB mic, on the other hand, like this HyperX Quadcast, has, it's got USB and it's got a headphone jack. That's it. The whole purpose of these is not only to just be your mic, but to be your entire audio interface. So you plug the USB mic into your gaming PC, you plug your headphones into the audio jack, your gaming audio comes through the microphone into your headphones. You're also able to hear your microphone back in your own head without any latency because it's not going through the computer first. But you do lack a lot of control and versatility with these. So if this is what I was using, let me tell you what I'd do. So right off the bat, as long as you've got the mic set as your default device on your gaming PC, you've not only got your game sound and your chat going to you, you've also got your microphone going to your gaming PC and your chat can hear your voice. What we're really trying to accomplish is then getting those sounds over to the streaming PC. And because there's not a central device like a GoXLR that's connected to everything, you're gonna have to use some other software that's gonna get a little more complicated. This is where you'd use something like Voice Meter. So let's jump over to the streaming PC and let's set this up. So on the gaming PC here, now that I have the mic plugged in and the headphones plugged into the mic, you can see what I got open here is I have my sound settings and I have voice meter banana. What you'll want to do is you want to take the mic here, click on it and set it as the default communication device. And then you'll want to go to the virtual cable, the voice meter banana virtual cable and make that the default device. Now over in voice meter, I know it's a little overwhelming. We're going to be looking at two inputs and two outputs over here. The very first input you're gonna set is that cable output. So basically what this is doing is it's taking any sound coming from the PC, it's sending it to a virtual cable, and then Voice Meter Banana is picking up that virtual cable. So you can see if we pick up some amazing, just raw talent here and play something beautiful. 
you can see it's picking up here in that virtual cable input. You can also see that it's picking up my voice in the second input because I've gone and set my microphone to be the next input. Up here are where we set the output. So what I did is I set the very first output to be my Elgato capture card. So now it's sending anything that's sending to that output to my streaming PC through the HDMI cable over into the capture card. And I have both of these two inputs sending to it because I have A1 selected, which sends it over to A1. I've got A2 selected as my headphones here, audio coming through the microphone back to my headphones. But you can see I don't actually have the microphone sending to A2, I only have the system audio, my PC sending to A2, because my microphone just by default, I can already hear the microphone directly monitoring back to my headphones. If I click A2 here, I'm gonna hear my voice twice, which I which I do actually when I click that, I hear it twice. So you don't need to resend your voice back to your headphones. You only need to send your game audio back to your headphones. So now what this has done is this has routed my mic and my game sound over to the streaming PC and it's routed the game sound back to my headphones. And you can see that it's working because in OBS on the streaming PC over here, you can see that it's picking up audio from my voice. And when we play this beautiful music, You can see it picks that up too. The last thing you can do if you do want to add a little bit more IO, a little bit more versatility to a mic like this, is you can pick up for $130 an Astro mix amp and attach something like this to it. You can see it's going to add in quite a bit of IO that's going to help you out, give you a few more options. And here's what I would do in this situation. You would plug this into your gaming PC and this would be your default device. You are gonna plug your USB mic into your PC, but that's only for power. These little headphone and microphone splitters that you can plug into the headphone jack, and then you'll go out of the headphone jack on here directly into the microphone jack on here. So now your microphone audio is going directly into the microphone jack of your mix amp. And then you plug your headphones into the headphone jack on here. So now again, just like you had before on the microphone, you've got your audio connected to your gaming PC through USB on here. Everything's going back and forth. But now sending to your streaming PC can be a lot easier because this has something built in called a stream port. Basically, a line out to your stream. And in the Astro software on your PC, you can actually mix how you want all the different sources like the game sound, the chat sound, your microphone, how much sent to the stream. It also has an aux port, which is basically the same as a line in. So if you want to be able to hear your stream alerts or music on your streaming PC, you can go from the line out on your streaming PC into the aux port on the back of here and you can hear those. You don't have as much control with something like this as you do with the Go XLR. Also, you have to use the software on your PC to make adjustments rather than faders right on the device. But for $130, if you don't wanna save up $250 for a Go XLR Mini, which if you're a streamer, I probably recommend you do anyway. But if you really don't want to, this is a great tool for streamers to help with IO and versatility and, and having a solid stream setup that's pretty easy to manage. It's more of a gaming device than a streaming device, but they did add some things in it to really help. Moving on to number three. Let's say you've got a microphone and one of these behemoths and you wanna set this up for streaming. There are a handful of ways to set something like this up and it completely depends on what you need. For example, if you need virtualized surround sound, I wouldn't recommend going out of the headphones on this. I would go directly into your PC. But if you wanna be able to hear your own voice, you'll need to go directly into the headphone jack so that you're not going through a PC and then having it monitored back to your ears, you'll get some latency that way. So let's go over one way to take care of this and then you can kind of tweak it from there. I'd plug this thing directly via USB into the streaming PC and I'd plug your headphones into this headphone jack. For me, monitoring my own voice is, is really important, being able to hear what I sound like on stream. Then to connect this to the streaming PC, I'd go out of the effects send into the line in on the streaming PC. And then I'd go from a line out on the streaming PC into one of these stereo inputs on the mixer. For that, you'll need a separate cable. It'll need to be a 3.5 inch, just a standard aux plug on one end, the other side being split left, right quarter inch plugs to plug into two of these at the same time left going to the top, right going into the bottom. And of course, your microphone plugs into here. So that way you've got the volume knobs here for your voice, and then under five slash six, or whatever stereo input you plug your PC into, you got the volume knob there. And that's gonna go both to your headphones and to your streaming PC, and you'll have a separate headphones knob just to control the volume of your headphones and not change the volume of your PC. Also make sure the effects knob is only turned up 
on your microphone and not turned up on the 5.6 coming from your gaming PC. Otherwise, you're gonna be sending your gameplay sound to your chat. <laughs> You don't wanna do that. And now you've got your microphone going to your streaming PC and the streaming PC sounds coming to your headphones through USB. You've got your gameplay sound coming through inputs five and six and your microphone going to the gaming PC via the effects send and the gaming PC audio coming into five and six to the streaming PC via these knobs at the bottom controlling the volume. Back when I actually had this one set up, I used it again in tandem with a mix amp. And basically I used this plugged in USB to the streaming PC and nothing else. I went out of the effects send into the little microphone input here and then had this basically control everything. This was plugged into my gaming PC, just like the last one. That's all it took. And how'd that go? <laughs> there are so many different ways to set up audio for a streaming PC. I hope this has given you all the tools you need to set up yours. I also hope now you understand why I rant and rave about this device. It's not that this thing makes your stream sound amazing. It does sound great, but it simplifies everything down to you turn the knob up and down if you want something to be quieter or louder. I'm almost, I'm like getting exhausted filming this video. <laughs> but let me know in the comments down below if there's any questions I didn't answer or jump into the stream and we can talk about this all next stream in the beginning of the stream. So link to my stream down below. Also jump into the Discord. We have an amazing community of like 30,000 people in there right now. All people who are setting up streams and looking for ways to make their stuff look and sound better. Find someone to collaborate with there. I'm sure there are people in there that have answers to your questions that I may have missed. Also, you can always tweet at me or hit me up on any, you guys know how social media work. I hope this was as helpful as I could make it out to be. I really did my best, you guys. And as always, happy streaming. Have you, have you, have you ever had to deal with that drunk, that one drunk friend in your life? I can't stop laughing. I'm so tired. <laughs>